Okay, we are going to look at some examples of position time graphs uh, and curves that we can see that might be common types of curves on those graphs. Then we'll do the same for velocity time graphs and acceleration time graphs. Okay. So let's say we have a graph. Here's the first scenario we're going to evaluate. Let's say we have a graph like this, and there's our curve inside of the xt graph. So that's the xt curve. And some object A the first thing that you ask yourself is what's happening to the slope here? Right? And the reason we ask this is because the slope of an xt graph has a very, very important physical meaning. The slope of an xt graph is the velocity. So we ask what's happening to the slope. We say it's a straight line, so that means it's a constant slope, and it's positive because it goes up. Right From left to right, the line goes up. So we have a constant positive slope, which means we have a constant positive velocity for A. For B, object B, uh, we look and we say, OK, there's a constant slope because it's a straight line. It's negative. right? And that constant negative slope means we have a constant negative velocity for object B. That's what object B is moving with, constant negative V. <coughs> the other thing to notice is that in each of these cases, Right, the object is starting at the position of x equals or position uh, of zero meters. Right, so the y-axis here, position is on the y-axis, and they're both starting at zero meters. So, if I say I'm two meters from the wall, right, and I need to say what I'm two meters from in order to really define a position, and when I say two meters from the wall. I am defining the wall to have the position 0 meters. Right. So 0 meters, which is here on the axis, on the graph, that's simply where our reference point is. So as objects go farther and farther away from the x-axis, they're getting farther from the reference point. Right. Object A is getting farther to the right of the reference point, whereas object B is getting farther to the left. Or maybe it's farther north and farther south or farther east and west. These are just arbitrary directions that we assign. One is positive and the opposite from it is the negative direction. Right. And it could be curved, right? If we have a curved line, the objects are still getting farther and farther from the reference point, from the axis, the y x-axis. <coughs> uh, so what we know already is that velocity is the same as slope. So what if we have a curved line where the slope is changing? Well, there's a different process you use to find the slope, right? And what that process involves is drawing what we call a tangent line. So let's say we have some uh, time t1, and we want to know the velocity at that particular time, which means we need to know the slope at that particular instant, right? You trace up, here's the process you use to find that slope, to find that instantaneous velocity at this time, at this point. You trace up from that time to the curve, you mark that point on the curve, and then you draw the tangent line. Now the tangent line is simply the straight line which only touches the curve at that point. So there's the tangent line at that point. You get a different tangent line at different points on the curve. Right? And M1 is the slope, so here's the tangent, there's its slope and that is the slope of the curve at that point. And because slope and velocity are the same for an xt graph, this, m1, is the velocity of the curve, right? It's the velocity that the object has at this time, t1. And it changes. We can see that the tangent will look different at different times because the slope is changing because it's not a straight line. So what if we have a flat uh, PT curve, right? something like this? Clearly, this is very straightforward. This line you can think of as a series of really tiny, small points that are so close together that they just form this continuous line. And every point has an x-coordinate time and a y-coordinate position. The x-coordinate, uh, sorry, the y-coordinate tells us the position that the object held and the y-coordinate, uh, x-coordinate tells us the time at which the object held that position. 
So as we move forward in time, right, as we move forward in time on the curve, we notice that every point on the curve, no matter how far forward in time we go, every point has the same y value, the same position. So the y value isn't changing. It's not going up, it's not going down. Uh, this tells us that the object's not moving. It's remaining at some fixed position. And of course, position is measured relative to reference point. Standing still. And that naturally means velocity is zero, and so is acceleration. So what if we have a straight uh, line? What if we have something like this? This is what we already evaluated, right? It's the same thing that we saw before. Uh, we said here, in this earlier example, go all the way back, we said we were looking at this and we said the reason we see this example is so we can remember that when the line gets farther away from the x-axis, the object is moving away from the reference point. Uh, but we evaluated the same thing that we want to see in this next example, right? This is a constant slope because it's a straight line, it has a constant slope. It's a positive slope because it's going up. And that means the object has a constant positive slope or constant positive velocity. And we saw the same here. We've already seen this, so this is kind of repetitive. So we're going to skip, skip on ahead. Uh, what if we want to find if, oh, and <clears throat> let me say, right, when the velocity is positive, as in this case, that simply means that the object has some speed in the positive direction. So the object's moving forward. Object A here is moving forward. Or maybe it's north, or east, or to the right, whatever we define to be positive. Right, when we say that an object has negative velocity, all we mean is that it has some speed in the negative direction like 10 meters per second to the left, or backward, or west, or south, which is an arbitrarily defined direction. But it's just the opposite of whatever the, whatever the forward direction is. So this object has positive velocity, it's moving forward. This one has negative velocity, it's moving backward. Uh, we could do the same thing, find out if an object is moving forward or backward, even if we don't have a straight line. So here's an XT curve that is bent upward, right? It moves upward. So at some time, t1, we can find the tangent line like that, draw the tangent line. And then we say, OK, whatever the, uh, whatever the sign of its slope is tells us if we're moving forward or backward, or south or north, or east or west. Right? It tells us if we're moving in the positive direction or the negative direction. This slope is positive at t1, so the object had a positive v at t1, because v and m are the same. And that tells us it was moving in the positive direction. <clears throat> what about acceleration? Uh, what if that's, how do we know if that's positive or negative? Uh, clearly, if our line is straight, there's no acceleration because we have a constant slope and constant velocity. So we only have acceleration when, we, when there's like a bend in the line like this. And the question is, is it positive or negative acceleration? Um, I'll go ahead and tell you. This is what positive acceleration looks like. So here's why. We examine successive tangents. Right? This is something like negative 10 as the slope. This is a little less steep, so negative 5. This next one is 0. The next tangent has a slope of 5. And the next tangent has a slope of, let's say, positive 10. So it's going negative 10, negative 5, 0, 5, 10. Those are increasing. The slope of these tangent lines, of successive tangent lines, increases from left to right. So as we move forward in time, the slope is increasing, which means the velocity is increasing. And specifically, it's getting less negative over here, negative 10, negative 5, that's less negative. More positive over here, positive 5, positive 10. And this tells us that we have an increasing velocity. Increasing slope means increasing velocity. And that's a positive acceleration, right? Plus a, or you could say a plus. Good job, A+. plus. So here's how you remember. When we have a bowl that can hold our soup, that's positive, because we like soup. So that's positive acceleration when it forms a bowl. And it can form any part of the bowl. It doesn't have to make the whole bowl for the acceleration to be positive. On the other hand, if we have an upside down bowl, if we're dumping the soup out, that's sad and negative. Right, so that's when we have negative acceleration. This positive acceleration, you could also think of it as a smiley face. Right? And a, a sad face is negative acceleration.
Uh, we're looking at VT graphs now. These are different. So that's the next example. On a VT graph, the x-axis does not represent the reference point. That was for position time only. Now the x-axis represents the velocity v equal to 0 meters per second. Right? As we move up on the uh, y-axis, as the y value of the data points, as that y value increases, we have increasing velocity. If we're in the top half, we have positive velocity and we're moving forward. If we're in the bottom half of a VT curve, we have negative velocity, right? And the object is moving backward at that time. So if it's ever on the Z, uh, on the x-axis, its value of V is zero, or if it's passing through, like here. <clears throat> As we get farther and farther away, we're speeding up. So object A here is speeding up because V is increasing, right? Its Y, its Y coordinate gets bigger and bigger as we move forward in time. So each successive point has a bigger y-coordinate, bigger velocity. And <clears throat> that tells us it's speeding up in the positive direction. Right? Here's an object that's speeding up in the negative direction. It's going 5 meters per second south here, then 10 meters per second south here. And it's speeding up as it goes. It's just that that speed increase occurs in the negative direction, as shown here. So any object with positive velocity is moving forward. right? So this object A is moving forward the whole time. Object B is moving backward the whole time because its velocity for this entire curve is negative. But they could be curved, and the same effect is true. It still speeds up as long as the y value uh, is getting farther and farther away from the x-axis, even in a curve. Uh, a bent curve, right? I should be careful about using the word curve. Curve can mean straight or bent. <clears throat> so you can find the instantaneous acceleration. Ah, wait, this is different. The slope of an xt graph gives us velocity. The slope of a vt graph gives us acceleration. So if you have some, uh, some upward bending curve like this, we want to find the instantaneous acceleration at t1. You just find the instantaneous uh, or the slope at t1. And we know how to do that, right? you draw your tangent and you find the slope. So the slope of the tangent gives us the acceleration, right? The acceleration at this time, t1, this point, with t1 as at the time. Um, <clears throat> what if we have a flat line above or below the x-axis? Well, clearly, the y-coordinate of successive points doesn't change, right? When we move forward on the line, when we move forward in time, we have the same y-value, the same velocity. So that's constant velocity, right? zero acceleration. Because we're in the top half, the velocity is positive and we're moving forward. If we have a constant acceleration on the bottom half, or sorry, a constant velocity, excuse me, zero acceleration, uh, in the bottom portion of this VT curve, now that's a constant negative, ex uh, negative velocity, which means we have constant velocity in the negative direction. A is zero because it's constant. Velocity doesn't change, which means delta V is zero and A is zero. Uh, the great thing about VT graphs is that the area under the curve has a special meaning, right? So let's say we have some time interval from T1 to T2, and here's our VT curve. If you find this area, you have just found the displacement during that particular time period, right? So if we have like tick marks on the y-axis and tick marks on the x-axis, then you could look and say, well, this whole area simply equals the area of the triangle. So you count how many tick marks this way, that's the base. Count how many tick marks go up this way, that's the height. And we have one half base times height for this area. Then you find the area of the rectangle down here, right? Just height times base. You count tick marks to get the values. You add the two together, and that equals your displacement. Displacement is positive if the area is above the x-axis, like this is. But if the area were below the x-axis, somewhere down here, that would be negative area, and it would be negative displacement. 